District 2. Brian, are you the only one here for District 2? No. Come on. Come on. Josh is here. Is he out in the hallway? Josh is here. Josh was here. Will somebody see if he's in the outside? I want to make sure that everybody that came has the opportunity to talk. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and let uh, Brian tell us a little bit about himself. And hopefully the other candidate, if he's in the outside, comes in. There he is. There he is. Okay, uh, Good noon, or however you say it. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the uh, it's midday. Yeah, thank you for uh, having us, especially talking to the grandmothers and mothers group. I appreciate it, uh, especially learning the people that know the great. Especially like the history lesson this morning. Um, I, I am a, a native Corpus Christian. I tell everybody I'm born and raised here. I get my education here with the Fannin Elementary. Went to South Park Junior High, Moody High School, graduated, went off to college, got my degree at uh, Texas A&M, go Islanders. Uh, went off and got my master's degree there. I'm married, my lovely wife, she finally made it. There she is, uh, Diana Rosas. We have uh, four children, four grandkids, so we're very vested here. I tell everybody we have two dogs and two cats. We got a cat that comes around and eats two, I guess it's ours. <laughs> We're at a point where we're adopting cats, but we need to stop that. Um, we'll talk about it later, honey. Anyway, what I want to tell you is that I'm the voice of the community, I'm the voice of the neighborhood. I want to, I want to let you know a little about myself. Um, I was a teacher at one time. I coached at Ray High School, football, baseball, wrestling. People have said, are you going at large? And I think they get confused about being large. I'm large, <laughs> but it's an industry. So we're going to do big things, and I tell everybody that. So make sure you understand the difference. Uh, it is a vacated seat. It is a torch I want to run with. I want to keep the city going in the right direction. I know a lot of us are advocates for doing the right things. So I want to make sure everybody understands that. Uh, first and foremost, I am the voice of the neighborhood. But the last endorsement, even though I didn't get the uh, fire department and the police department, which I appreciate very much so, I want to tell everybody I need your endorsement. I need you to go out and get your friends' endorsements. To come and vote for me, let me get in there, let's mix things up and let's move to the right direction. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, the loud. Good afternoon. My name is Josh with the United Morning for City Council District 2. Um, I grew up here in Corpus Christi. Um, I grew up a few blocks away from Leopard. I um, went to high school, and then I went to Del Mar on a and Corpus Christi. And while I, while I was in there, I was a Boy Scout, and maybe an Eagle Scout. And that's really where I learned um, gain a sense of duty learn that you can only grow by serving others. Um, and so professionally, I've served on the boards of the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. I've served on the board of the Young Business Professionals of the Coastal Bend. I'm a graduate of Leadership Corpus Christi and also a Corpus Christi 40 under 40 honoree. Um, and I gotta tell you, I love the city of Corpus Christi. Um, I have um, a pretty strong record of being involved in the community. Um, I've helped the downtown management district paint curves downtown. I've helped YBP paint our water garden. You know, I've gone to Austin and lobbied with a and Corpus Christi for more money for a university. And since I have declared my candidacy back in February, I rarely miss a city council meeting, okay? Because I think it's very important to be informed. Um, and that's a, a point that the Corpus Christi Caller Times, when they endorsement made, that um, I am the best informed and the best network. Um, I also received the endorsement of the Builders Association. Um, now, I have to say I'm very proud of both of those. Um, economic development, as we know, and um, infrastructure is is big as some of the main topics. And our build, people who um, are involved in the Builders Association literally build our city from the ground up. They're your contractors. You know, they help build this infrastructure and the homes you live in and the streets you drive on. And so we got to be aware of that. And I have received their endorsement and very proud of it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very motivated. I. Uh, I'm telling you, I think if you are going to spend so much time involved in your city, you have to have a love and a passion for it. And I know some of us are angry. We have a lot of challenges moving forward. But first and foremost, I like to think we I think we are moving in a pretty good direction. You know, every economic development study shows us that we're moving upward and forward. And I'm very happy to, you know, to, to get on board with that. I am motivated and I am excited. My name is Joshua Dihidina, and I'm a candidate for District 2. Thank you.
are there any questions for the district? Mr. Thomas, over here. Two. I'm going to ask you both, what changes do you think you would like to bring the city? The question was, what changes do you want to bring to the city? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. First and foremost, I'd like to tell everybody I, I, I would be the voice for District 2. Um, infrastructure is needed all the way around the city. We all know that. But definitely in District 2, one of our oldest part of the city structures, it's the only district that touches all four districts, five districts. So it's important that we elevate what we have now. We talk about expansion and um, innovation, but the biggest thing we do is take care of what we have. I, I like the analogy of a house, and we talk about that constantly, and I know everybody uses that cliche, but you have to have a good foundation before you move on and expand. You can't build an addition to a house if your roof is in. You know, we, we, we need to make sure we keep that concept. Me being elected would definitely be a voice for my district, but again, I'm willing to, I can't wait to work with the rest of the city council members, but I do have to tell you, I want to be the voice for my neighborhood and my district so that everybody understands that uh, you do have a voice in the council. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have to say I, I partially agree with my opponent because uh, being a voice for, the, for your neighbor is incredibly important. And uh, moving forward, I, I definitely want to make sure that the citizens are given valuable representation. Uh, but what's important to know as a city councilman that you have to be more than just a voice for your neighborhood. Um, District 2 covers um, a wide range of neighborhoods, not only Glendale, um, but Del Mar, Meadowbrook, Casa Linda, and even those around the, the hospital in King High School. And I've block walked almost every single one of those neighborhoods thus far. And even though I'm very much in tune with my neighbors, I'm also in tune with your neighbors. And moving forward, I think this district needs a valuable voice who's willing to take the time and knock on those doors and make sure that each one of these residents they have my cell phone number, they have my email address, they're very well aware that they can meet me for coffee, and they actually already have started doing that. And I think it's very important that when you're a candidate, you start doing the job as soon as possible. So I'm already sitting down with people, you know, for morning coffee breaks, even in the evening sometimes. And I think moving forward, if you talk about change, just you're giving these people a valuable voice that they can depend on. Thank you. One more question. Mr. Carlos. Oh, uh, Carlos Torres, a firefighter with the city of Corpus Christi. In my almost 30 years of uh, firefighting for the city, the last 16 years being association president, I have never uh, seen an issue like what's transpired now between the firefighters and the entire city council and the city manager and city staff where there's no communications. You know, there's no communications. There's no way to settle the issue at hand. In fact, I spoke with uh, former Mayor Neal and former Mayor Garrett about the situation, and they both assured me that had they been the mayor right now, this situation wouldn't have occurred because we would have spoken about it and, and been able to get through it. But with the litigation at hand, it's, it's difficult to move forward. And a lot of trust has been lost by the citizens of Corpus Christi and their city government. You're all three brand new candidates to District 2, uh, so how would you instill and get that trust back in the citizens if you're elected to City Council? Uh, well, that is a very good question, Carlos, and, and I do agree with you. I think it's very uh, saddened that we don't have the open communication that we should have. One of the best things I talk about is communication and transparency. Uh, I'm an open book. I mean, I, I give my number out with my cards. I tell everybody, one thing I can promise you, and I will always tell anybody this, is if you call, I'll call you back. Uh, I know I get in trouble sometimes because I don't call or answer the phone immediately. We'll talk about that later with my wife. But, but the thing is, I do return phone calls because that is, that is something that I, I, I truly value. As far as uh, block walking and stuff, I need to keep the block walking. I, I, as, you, as you can tell, I think it's one of the best things and best ways to actually go out and touch people. The fellowship of Corpus Christi, the stewardship of District 2, and especially with our safety. Firemen, uh, policemen, I mean, I, I don't know how, how upsetting I tell you it is, and this is the reason why I want to stand up and run for District 2, because I think it is a sad thing that we can't have that open communication with you guys. We need to get back on the table. We need to negotiate. The police officers will be having their contract coming soon, uh, and it's important we all sit down and talk about it, because that's the only way we're ever going to get to find medium. Um, 
along with the wages. I mean, we need to get there. So uh, I would definitely do a lot more research, understand the question a lot better, but I definitely will work toward that and, and helping everybody out, especially our safety and our fire and police department. Thank you. All right, Rosemary, I appreciate that question. And I think it's, it, um, we have to be very honest and say, yeah, unless you're an incumbent uh, and you're a new candidate like myself and my opponents, it's very difficult to talk about the situation intelligently. And, and so I'm very wary and very apprehensive to point fingers at anybody. Uh, but there is one thing I can promise you is that you get a clean slate with me, okay? Um, I am definitely not a fan of that. When you go to the negotiating table, then you end up talking about talking and arguing about arguing. Right, because then you, you you move away from re resolving the issue, right, and you, you start going tit for tat. And so I have to say I, I I don't like that and I don't appreciate it, but I also really can't speak intelligently as to how we got there. And um, anybody else who says they think they know, I think you know needs to take a step back, because um, um, unless you've been at that negotiating table, you really do not know the details. And so I just want to know that I am very excited to actually attack that issue. Um, I. You know, I wish it wouldn't be an issue when you knock on the fourth, but you know, it, it may very well be. And but I'm looking forward to meeting with you guys and going working towards a resolution, um, a long-term resolution at that. Um, as I said at the forum, you know, um, the firefighters. Forum, I hope some of these issues that the firefighters are asking aren't on the aren't an issue again two years from now or two years from then. You know, we need to start building a long-term relationship, and that's the way I think. I think very long-term. So um, I hope that answered your question. Um, I'm very appreciative of what you guys do. Um, there's a, a handful of your guys who live in my district. You know, and they've spoken to me about this issue, um, along with you know beach laws, and court enforcement, and a few other things. Um, so thank you for that question. Anyone else? Okay, so we're moving on to District Three. Applause.